So why do we believe in bursaries at Latimer? Well, when John's here, he's going to talk about the reasons that King Edward's Birmingham moved towards bursary provision, but we've got a slightly different angle on it. So Latimer Upper School um, is a popular and successful school. We are oversubscribed by 11 to 1 at 11 plus. So for every place we want, 11 people apply. I could fill the school very easily with bright, full fee paying children. But I don't want to do that, and I don't want to do that because actually that's not the kind of school we are, it's not the kind of school we want to be. We want to be a school where admission is based on ability and potential, not ability to afford our fees. And why does this matter? Well, it matters to the country. You'll be aware that social mobility is stagnant. And research by the Institute of Fiscal Studies shows that the highest performing 15-year-olds from poor backgrounds are on average two years behind the highest performing 15-year-olds from privileged backgrounds. Research by the University of Durham shows that between the state sector and the independent sector, there's about a one and a half year gap in terms of educational attainment. And that's before we think about access to high quality sport, music, drama, or indeed the soft skills. And I think that inequality is profoundly unfair, and it's something that we want to help fix. It matters to our school, because like John's school, King Edward's Birmingham, Latimer Up School was formerly a direct grant grammar school. So kind of our ethos and DNA is to have that grammar school ethos. Funnily enough, in our 400 years of history, we've only been a majority fee-paying school for 40 years. So you could argue being a fee-paying school is a blip in our history, and it's something we want to do something about. And actually, we talked about the benefits to bursary recipients, but it benefits the school to have a more diverse student body. And our parents don't want their children to go to a privileged, gated community where everyone is from a wealthy background, nobody understands the real world, nobody can get on with people from different walks of life. Our parents want us to be a school for people from all walks of life, from diverse backgrounds, culturally, socioeconomically, because it helps it to feel like real life and the modern world. So bursaries matter to the country, they matter to our school, and actually they matter to me personally. So I grew up um, in a working class family in the block of flats opposite Grenfell Tower. I was the first member of my family to study A-levels. I was the first member of my family to go to university. And I believe that a good education can and should change your life. And that's why I want to make that education more widely available to as many children as possible who can benefit whether or not their parents can afford our fees. And that's why we launched our campaign inspiring minds. So currently, we spend each year two million pounds a year on bursary support, and that funds 150 students in our school who wouldn't otherwise be there. Over the last decade, we've raised 19 million pounds for bursary support. But what we've launched is the most ambitious thing we've ever tried to do, and by 2024, which is our 400th anniversary, we want to be in a position where we've raised 40 million pounds. That will enable us to spend four million pounds a year on bursaries. It will also ensure that a greater proportion of those bursaries are secured by endowment. And what I should say is that um, most of our fee income is not used to support bursaries. It's used to pay for teachers. We support our bursaries through donations and through endowment returns because um, we think that's a fair way of doing it. So we want to raise 40 million pounds by 2024. It will double our bursary provision, double our annual spend on bursary, double our bursary endowment. And what that will mean is that we could be in a situation where one in four children in my school is there on a genuine means-tested bursary. And I think that would make us one of, if not the, in fact, John's not here, so I'll say the most socially inclusive independent school in the UK. And that's really important to us. Um, it's a really important ambition that has the full support of our students, our parents, our governors, our alumni, and it means a lot to us for all the reasons I've described. Um, just very quickly, um, in the Chief Master's study at King Edward School, Birmingham, one of the great schools of this country, the school of J.R.R. Tolkien, um, there is a league table from 1991 done by the Financial Times. In 1991, five of the top ten schools came, north of, came from north of Oxford, and King Edward School, Birmingham, beat into a cocked hat those southern softies like St. Paul's and Eton um, and Westminster. 
Why could that be even in 1991? Answer, because 80% of the boys who were at King Edwards in the 1960s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s were there for free. We were the great direct grant schools, as I'm sure David has explained. So therefore, our historic and our moral and our, indeed our civic purpose as a school like King Edwards has been to serve the city. When I arrived, having had that for each place, just like my brother, the number of assisted places was down at 10%. The performance of the school was materially lower because getting boys on assisted places to come, it's a boys' school, means you get really bright kids to come to improve your standards. And we've gone back up, thankfully, purely by having brighter kids from a wider range of, from a wider range of social and ethnic backgrounds. We are, we would claim, the most socially and ethnically diverse independent school in the country, 70% Asian, 25% Muslim, and that has been generated because assisted places have enabled us to bring those boys in. Enough of the advert. Um, the impact for schools like David's or for Manchester Grammar School or for King Edward School has been absolutely massive. And what we have tried to do, but I think one of the problems, as David may have explained, is it's really quite hard to make such schools accessible to a very wide range of people. If your day fees are 18, 20, 22,000 pounds, it's not easy to invent a sliding scale that will make it accessible. And indeed, in boarding schools, when your fees are 38, 35, whatever, thousand pounds, it's even harder to do that. So one of the, one of the real problems in independent education is how do you construct a mechanism that makes your school generally accessible? Um, David and I are very fortunate because we run schools that are embedded in their, in their areas. Um, and in our case, we have quite low fees. So at King Edwards, for example, we have a sliding scale. Um, and if you earn, roughly speaking, less than 50,000 pounds, you'll get a free place if your son wins such a place. Um, but our sliding scale goes out to 80. Um, so we kind of hope in Birmingham that every parent, be they a single mother or be a, 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 a two parents both working or a policeman or a bank official, everybody can think about it. But it's not that easy in other areas where fees are, fees are so much higher because you either need hundreds of millions of pounds to make it accessible or your sliding scale looks really, really odd and you're offering support to people who are earning 150,000 pounds. Um, I don't know what David says. I personally feel that at the moment in independent schools, in ISC schools, just under 8% of kids are on assisted places. And I personally feel that despite the, this, the difficulties and problems that schools face in doing it, I don't believe that that is um, a high enough proportion. And I believe that independent schools in this country should be absolutely doing all that they can. I think it should be the single most important purpose for independent schools. They've got fantastic exam results. They've set up overseas schools. Um, they've got their fees about as high as they can. I think the absolutely central moral agenda for independent schools is this accessibility issue. Uh, maybe, you're, maybe by the time some of your younger children are coming through in a decade's time, I hope that many more schools uh, will be able to do the thing, the kind of thing which um, King Edwards did and David has done. I want to finish by saying there is a big difference. At King Edwards School, we needed to get boys on assisted places because in a post-crash, post-industrial Birmingham, there weren't that many people who could afford our fees. Therefore, to maintain our national standing, our historic and moral purpose, we needed, we needed that money. So, funny, at lots of schools, it's a need Whereas I think for many independent schools, it's probably no more than a want. They might like to do it, but the urgency isn't there. And I, I'm not, I would urge independent schools, although it's different and difficult, uh, to be doing much, much more. Uh, and schools like David's in London is an absolute um, shining monument to what can be done. Perhaps we go up to questions. Thank you.